Hi everyone, I'm Tom and today I'm going to be playing Thiefdom, which is a game for one to four master thieves who are running a guild, a troop, a menagerie of bandits. We're going to be sneaking around the alleyways and the dungeons of the city, trying to make a quick buck, but also for glory. This is not to be the richest bunch of thieves, this is to be the best bunch of thieves. I'm going to be playing a two player game today. But before we get started, this is on Kickstarter right now from Karma Games. I'll put a link to the campaign page in the description and the corner of the screen so you can see how the final game is going to look. But this is a prototype that should give you a pretty great idea of that. This playthrough video was commissioned by Karma Games. I would recommend you turn on your subtitles to the Klingon channel. Any mistakes I might make are corrected there. Thanks, Steve. If you spot any that aren't there yet, let us know in the comments. And there are ways to support the channel in the description as well. Massive thanks if you can do that. So here is our city. It's a little bit reduced for a two player game. There are normally two more tiles if you're playing with three or four players, but largely other than that, it works in the same way. There's just some fewer locations. The city tiles can all be placed in different configurations, any orientation, they're double sided. They've got the same things on each side, but they are you know jumbled around. So your city configuration can be quite different. There are all sorts of locations in the city that we can go do some wheeling and dealing, buying stuff, selling our stolen wares. There are smugglers with certain requests that we want to fulfill. There are villas that we can break into and steal gems or paint or valuable paintings. There are catacombs that are kind of linked spaces. They make this space adjacent to this space, for example, or this space. We have hideouts. We chose in player setup to have our hideouts in the blacksmith and the garden, respectively. That's where all of our thieves start as well. There are some figures about on the board as well. There is the carriage. It's full of wine. You can steal it. There are nobles that are carrying around money and gems. You can steal that. And there are pesky gods on the lookout for you. They will all move once per round. Each player has control of different patrols. That'll switch from round to round. There are six rounds in the game. They're on the lookout for us trying to arrest us. But also, if we can sneak up on them, we can steal their badges, which can be worth some valuable points as well. During setup, we got a little draft of some equipment cards. We got three of each. I don't know why that gold's there. We got three of each and eight starting gold, and we were allowed to buy zero, one, or two of them. We've both gone for two bits of equipment, and you assign them to your different thieves. So my team of thieves is David, Elena, and Martin. David has got a grappling hook. He can swing between buildings with that, which hopefully be quite nice for getting about. And Elena has a lockpick, which is going to help her steal from houses. Now, this did cost seven of the starting eight gold, but what we do get is two points for this. The grappling hook doesn't get you anything. You start off with 10 points because you might be spending them as you move between each other. So each night, each round of the game, you can see they're all nights. The full moon means it's going to be over. The daytime in between each one is going to lead to a bit of resetting sometimes. So the first thing that happens is the planning phase, and we need these four markers. At the same time, players secretly decide in which order their pieces are going to go. So we have got three thieves to control, and we've also got our patrol board. So at the start of the game, you can see that I'm the first player. I am going to be moving nobles A and B and guards A and B. These cards are different depending on the player count. Here in a two-player game, we've got to try and split it. 50-50. So I am going to have some say in what these pieces do. So I want to try and keep the gods away from me and maybe go towards Marty's. I maybe want to bring the nobles towards me and away from Marty. If it sounds like sending gods to each other, maybe a little bit too cutthroat, then you can play a solo version of the game. So I think we're going to have David go first. And it's all in secret. Of course, Marty doesn't know this. I think I might want the patrols to go last. I do control no blame. Maybe I could, they're pretty close to me anyway, aren't they? Could move them towards me a bit. Let's have the patrols go next. I want God be out of the way so I can go in that villa. Then Elena, and then we will have Martin. So that's all in secret. Marty doesn't know what I'm doing. So Marty decides he's in secret too. And then we all reveal at the same time. And we're going to take it in turn, starting with our number one chosen activation. I'm the first player, so I will do my number one first, then Mott will do his, then I'll do my number two, and we keep going until we've done all four of our people. So first of all is David, one of my thieves. So your thieves have got three actions on their turn. They can move, use a location, steal, and use a card action, if they've got something that's a card action. So David has got a card action. 
and it's what he wants to use first. So once per night, he can, without having to move about, just jump from house to house across an alley in a straight line. He doesn't need to do this. He's showing off for you a little bit. So inside buildings like the blacksmith here and the market here, they're all one space, essentially. It will help him get to this market a little bit quicker, though, because usually it's three spaces is your movement. So moving out of here, one, two, three, doesn't actually get him in. He can ignore the usual entrance and exit spaces. So he's going to use the grappling hook and he goes straight to the market. So that's action number one. Action number two is going to be to use the location, the market that he's at now. So it's an action point to use the location and you can do all the things here once. So the first thing is fill your gold inventory to the max. You're stealing from the market while everyone's distracted. Your thieves' inventories have got spaces for loot and for gold. So David's just gained himself four gold. That's worth a point. Hopefully we'll turn it into bigger things, though. The other thing you can do here is give away liquor for one point each. A round of liquor on you makes everyone happy. We haven't got any liquor at the moment, so not going to be able to do that. But four free money isn't bad just for one action. Still got another one left. He's going to move normally this time. He is going to move one of his three spaces. Now, spaces containing a figure are skipped over. So he doesn't have to spend a movement to go on this space. You can't end in the same space either. Now, this is adjacent to a catacomb. That's important because all the spaces that are next to the catacombs are considered adjacent to each other. So basically, for one more movement point, he can go to here. And then his third movement point puts him right next to this noble. So that's his three actions done. But we do have this stamina token. Once per round, you can use your stamina token to give one of your players an extra activation and David's going to get that straight away. So another action you can do is steal from townsfolk. If you are standing adjacent to a noble, you can steal from them for an action point. And looking down at our little board here shows us what the nobles have. So this is noble B. They have their bag still available. I can either take two gold or a gem. We're full up on gold, so I think we'll take a gem. So that's going to be empty now until it replenishes after round two. And David is pretty loaded with stuff. The downside of that is he's out in the open. There are no guards very nearby, but it can be risky. He wants to get this stuff back to the hideout where it will be safe or trade it away somewhere. You can sell gems at the dealer. You can buy liquor at the taverns. Maybe what he'll do next. That's David done anyway, so we can come to Marty's number one which is Agatha. Now, Agatha has a cudgel. This is going to give her a bonus if she steals from a guard, which is exactly what she's going to do. It may be a little bit wasteful doing this. Hey, sometimes I'm just showing you stuff. So Agatha can move one, two, three spaces. It's not quite next to a guard. So she's going to have to spend another action to move adjacent. Now, this is important. The line of sight for the carriage and for the nobles is the space that they're in. If they walk over you, they will see you if you're wanted. They'll spot you and that's bad. The guards are actively looking for you all of the time. They have a line of sight though, just like the players do until it's blocked off basically by a wall or a building or something. They have a field of view. The field of view for the guards is the way that they're facing. So usually these figures would be standing up and the side with the eyes is the direction that they're facing. They face away from the villa that they start the game guarding. Now because we are top down, we're bird's eye, I'm just going to have you know, their, their feet pointing to the direction that they're facing in. Basically, you don't want to be in their line of sight. They'll try and arrest you. So for Agatha's third action, she can steal from the guards. If your thief's in an alley space adjacent to a guard and you're not in their line of sight, so you're either behind them or in their flank, for one action point, you can steal their badge. So this is guard C. Their badge has been stolen from them. It goes in Agatha's loot. Badges can be turned in at the dungeon for two points each, or the smugglers often want badges, among other things, to be turned in for big points. Like here, a badge, a gem, and a wine can be turned in for nine big points. One thief is going to have to have all that together, but it's doable. Now, when Agatha steals from a guard, she gets a bit extra because of the cudgel that she's got. Marty gets one point for doing that and immediately moves the guard. We are about to see how guards move, but here we go, a little bit sooner. So you can choose any of the three directions from their point of view. They will not move backwards, but they can turn to their left or right or move straight forwards. In this case, they can't move straight forwards because they're on the job. They're not going into the tavern. They just want to be in the alleys. They're looking for you. So you move them in a direction and they keep moving until they reach a lantern. Looking in the direction they were last moving in. 
over to me and it is time for the patrol. So I need to move these townsfolk in order. So it's going to be Noble A. The nobles can move in any direction and stop on the first unoccupied lantern. It doesn't particularly matter right now. Let's have them go there. Next is Noble B. We could have them move out of our way, really. They haven't got any goodies anymore. Then it's God A and God B. So we've just seen how gods move. They will turn, you know, like 90 degrees round corners. So this one will stop at this lantern facing in that direction. And B over here, we want to just clear off out of the way of this villa so one of our thieves can slip in. So that was it for my activation. Mozzie's also chosen number two for his patrols. So he's doing Noble C and God C. He doesn't mind the noble just going over there. And God C can keep away from him. He also moves the carriage. You move it any direction you choose at any crossroads which way you want it to go. It has to skip exactly one lantern, so it's got to move two lanterns basically, and stops on the second unoccupied lantern it reaches. I think it wouldn't be too bad. Let's have it go over. There's one lantern, and Marty wants it to end up on this one. That's his activation number two. I am going to activate Elena, who has got a lockpick. I don't think she's going to get to use it just yet. We need to get her to a villa first. She's going to move out here. She does get to skip this space, which is nice. One, two, three. Oh, she will actually get to steal it this time. One, two, three. Because we've put that noble in the way. Hey, it was totally intentional. We can now go straight into the villa with six movement because we get to skip past that space. So at the villa, you can spend an action to either completely fill up on gems or steal the painting that's here. One of these two things will have a lockpick symbol on it, which means you can't choose that option unless you have a lockpick. And that's exactly what she's got. Loading up on gems would be lovely, but she is going to steal this painting, which is worth two gold and eight points. It takes up all of the slots in her loot section. So that's her three actions. Over to Marty and Baldwin is going. Baldwin has some shoes that allow him, whenever he moves, to move four spaces instead of three. Now Baldwin is at the hideout still. Marty has two leftover gold at the hideout from setup. Baldwin is going to take that with him when he goes out. He's going to move one, two, three. He is going to steal from the carriage. The carriage has got wine in it. You get one wine for stealing from the carriage. If you don't drop it, it'll smash. You've got to be adjacent to it, but also you receive a wanted poster. Wanted posters are bad. Nobles and the carriage can now arrest you if you skip over their space. They will sound the alarm when they spot you. Their field of view is the space that they're on. So if you jump over them or they jump over you, they spot you and you'll get arrested. You can get rid of it by running into the hideout, which is just back up here. He could do that straight away. Or by going into the dungeon and getting rid of it for three points. At the moment, he's just going to keep hold of it, but he's going to have to worry about that. For his third action, he's kind of fenced in a bit now. He doesn't want to get rid of the wanted poster. I think he's going to lay low for a bit in this house. It's a bit of a waste of an action. Yeah, he wants to turn that in for three points at some point, so he's going to stay wanted for a bit. Your thieves can trade if they walk over each other as well. So Agatha could give him the badge that she's got. And if he can get a gem from somewhere, like maybe a villa, maybe Agatha needs to go and get a gem from the villa, bring them over to Baldwin, and he could go turn them in at this smuggler for nine points. For now, he'll lay low. So you can't be spotted if you're in a house, because he is a wanted man. Finally, it's time for activation number four and martin's time to shine martin does not have any equipment at the start of the game anyway he is going to come out with a gold though why not he is going to move out of the hideout to be adjacent to noble a he is going to steal from them oh actually no he'll leave that gold in the hideout he'll steal a gem from them and then third action he will go into the market and try and fill up on gold next time Marty's number four is isabella who also has no items currently isabella is just going to move one two oh that noble a is empty steal from the final noble take a gem and move one two three as she passes over agatha she's going to hand off her gem to agatha so she's got space to go and steal that painting next time and there we go the night is over it is daytime we move the round marker down to round two your planning markers and your stamina token can come back and what he didn't even spend his stamina token i thought he'd spent it earlier so he could have Isabella end up in the villa then, rather than spend an action doing it next time. So your markers come back, your patrol cards, they, they move anti-clockwise, but in a two-player game, swapsies. And each player gets a point for every thief that is out in an alleyway. So for Marty, that is just one. And, oh, actually, for me, that's one as well. I've got someone in the market and someone 
in a villa. And there we go, after rounds two and four, there's a bit of a replenishing. The nobles get their bags back, guards get their badges back. But we move on to round two with Marty as the first player. Bearing in mind that now, he was moving Guard C around, now I'm doing it. Luckily they can't turn back on themselves, but I'm also controlling Noble C and the carriage. And at the moment, he's got hemmed in there, old wanted Baldwin. So he'll definitely try and make Baldwin go last. He can get in my way with the patrols for sure. Oh dear, I hadn't planned for that very well. Isabella is just still I don't know where she'll end up. And then Agatha can just go third. So knowing that he's kind of penned in there, maybe I want to move the patrols last as well. Although it would be nice to get the carriage near me so I could nick some wine off it. David's in a vulnerable position. We'd want him to go first. But I think it's too late for him. Then Elena, then Martin. So yes, first up is the patrols. So Noble A needs to move. Moz kind of wants them away from his wanted person though. Noble B needs to move. He just wants to leave a nice clear path for Patrolman A, who is going to move down to this lantern. And in line of sight now is David. This can happen if you're in the field of view while they're moving as well. So your thief needs to lie down to show they've been arrested. Of course, we're bird's eye, so they're lying down anyway. So we'll have them lying down the wrong way up, just on their edge. You check to see if they can prevent an arrest. They might have means to do that, like say a smoke bomb. Not at the moment, though. So our thieves are very clever. They've always got small tools that will let them escape back to their hideout. But in doing so, they drop all of their goods and it's a disgrace to your guild. So you lose two points for having been arrested and everything that person was carrying gets dropped in the dungeon. So that was Patrolman A and then Patrolman B. There's not much choice because there's no lantern to stop out here. They've got to go for this one because they can't go backwards. So still kind of in the way and stopping Marty getting to the dungeon. So there we go. That was Marty's first activation. Mine is poor old David. He's still got his grappling hook. David's going to go one, two, three. And could just go back to the dungeon. And it's an action to pick up one to four things. He could get back most of his stuff with just one action. But what he's going to do instead is just move out for one. And he's going to steal God B's badge. Because that can be shown off, given away at the dungeon for two points. So he moved into there, he moved out there, he stole from the guard. That's David's turn done, unless we want to give him the extra action again. I think we're okay. I think he's okay there. He's not wanted. Yeah, we'll leave him out in the open again. Number two for Marty is Isabella, who is in a villa, I think. In that villa, the gem action is padlocked, so without a lockpick, she can't do that. But she can steal this lovely painting, which is worth a badge and eight points. Goes into her now empty loot slots. She wants to get to the dealer to get rid of that. So she can move with a second action. One, two, three. Third action moves her one, two, three, which is unfortunate. I think rather than that third one, she's going to move a three into the hideout. So she's safe from any patrols. I'll be moving bees next. And these spaces are going to be empty, so... Actually, that means the patrol's going to be there. Maybe she's safe. It's still only going to be one movement action to go there, though. Just to be safe. She could stash the painting at the hideout if she really wanted to. But since the hideout's right next to where we can sell that painting, might be a bit daft to do. We want someone gathering up all of these badges and things. So that's Isabella done. For me, Elena is next with her lockpick. Now, this guard is a real problem for getting to anything. She can move one, two, three into the building. So you can take some shortcuts with the buildings, but your movement ends when you go in one. So one, two, three. So I can't make it into that one, unfortunately. One, two, three. That's where Elena's gonna end up. Number three is Agatha. She's got a badge. She's got a gem. Where's she gonna end up? She's got no money on her, so it wouldn't be could try to recruit someone. She could have a bar fight. Now, this is actually annoying. She could do with the wine from Baldwin, but you can't trade while you're in a house. You're trying to be, you know, discreet in a house. You can do it while you slip past each other in an alleyway. Stealing from the wine crate would leave her right next to it. She's got no money right now. Baldwin probably should have just gone and left himself out in the street. He didn't know when the patrols were going to move, though. She just want to sell the gem for just one point. Baldwin's got all of the stuff. He needs to get rid of his wanted poster, doesn't he? He wanted to get three points for it, but I don't think it's happening. Agatha will go one, two, three into the hideout and she will drop this stuff off at the hideout. There are eight spaces for things and then she is just going to pop out again. One, the space is occupied. Two, three. She is going to fill up on some gold and try and get recruiting, get some equipment and stuff. 
rather than being hemmed in and waiting for Baldwin there. Okay, my number three is Martin, who is already in the market. Doesn't have any liquor, but it's definitely going to fill up on gold. Can they go one, two, three? They could swap stuff if they wanted right now. So Martin could take the painting. I don't, I don't think so, though. He's going to keep moving. One, two, into the tavern. He's got full money. First of all, he can... Well, he can have an interaction in here. It doesn't have to be making a friend. You can do these in any order. So if your guest slot is empty, the person that's gone in there, so Martin's guest slot is empty, you can draw four cards from the guest draw pile. So we've got Wibbled, the judge, Janice, the brewer, Jonathan, the gourmet, and Larissa, the engineer. They all do different things. You can make a friend. You can pay their cost in the bottom corner here. To recruit them, you get their points and you get their power for the rest of the game, you can only ever have one friend each. And once you've gained a friend, you can't get rid of them, unfortunately. So being friends with the judge gets you a badge immediately. And guards in the Dungeon City Square cannot arrest the friendly thief, even if it's not your turn. So that would be this square here where the dungeon is. That would be quite nice. Janice gives you two liquor immediately. And then when you do the market action, you can sell liquor for two points each instead of one. At the tavern, Jonathan lets you sell wine for four points instead of two. Or, he's a gourmet, he wants the wine. You can sell wine at the villas for four points instead. And the Larissa, the engineer, shows you a secret tunnel in Blacksmithies. And you can teleport from Blacksmith to Blacksmith. So that's, that is fairly useful because Blacksmith is our hideout. I think the brewer is going to make friends with that brewer. He has spent a lot of his money to do that now and we get a point. But... What if he could just keep making runs here? Pick up all of the money here, pick up liquor with it here, sell that liquor for a point each. I suppose there might be more lucrative ways of uh, earning money, but the liquor's worth two points each. That could be eight points a time. He can't make more friends now. It's something to think about. So what you can also do is, you could choose to have a bar fight. So you don't need to pay any costs, but you only get one point. But you put them face down so you don't get an ability and you can't make a friend for the rest of the game. That thief can't make a friend. These go into a discard pile now. You can also choose to do nothing if you don't want to do anything. So other things that we can do at the tavern, we can buy liquor for a gold each. Martin's only got one gold now, but he can buy himself a liquor. And you can sell wine for two points each. That's Martin done. We haven't used our stamina yet. I think let's get Martin moving back. He's going to go one, two, three. Oh, subtitle. When Agatha came into the market, Martin was already there. If you go into a place where a rival gang is then you lose a point same as if you cross them in the street as well okay marty's number four is baldwin who is rather stuck is going to have to the patrols are about to move he can't just waste a turn being in there he's going to go one two three get rid of his wanted poster by changing into a disguise at the hideout he's going to pick up this stuff while he's here does he drop off the money or keep it maybe drop off the money maybe we don't want the two money after all so that was one action moving and then he's going to go one two three doesn't matter that he's in our hideout it's just a normal space to other gangs and then one two three so again he's not in the street but he's right next to where he needs to be to hand those three things in for nine points next time my final thing is patrols so first of all noble c is about to get replenished actually let's have them going towards me a bit god c could have them going back up towards that villa or going towards this place and then maybe going down yeah, let's go that way. Then the carriage moves twice. Well, what about... There's one unoccupied lantern. There's two. And it's right next to us. Get some wine off it. Go into the bar with it. Oh, once he's still got his stamina. Well, Baldwin could have the stamina. And then one, two, three. End up in the smuggling room. Can't do it yet. Gotta spend an action to do it. But still. Okay, then. It's the end of the day. We move on to day three. We get our planning markers and stamina back. Patrol boards, swap. A point for everyone in an alley space. None of Marty's, two of mine. And then at the end of round two and four, we flip the bag tokens so the nobles now have things again and can be stolen from. We replenish badges on the guards. Any smuggling locations without a smuggling mission, get a new one. And then the equipment cards on display. You can get equipment from the dealer here. If we can ever get there, yeah, the, the four on display go away and we see four new ones. There are basically 12 different types of equipment, and there are two copies of each one. Okay, round three. It's me again. What do we want to happen? Are we in danger of the guards doing stuff? 
So I'm in control of A and B. Martin's gonna go first with his booze. And then I think Elena will have the patrols go third and David can go fourth. Yeah, Baldwin's gonna go first. Try and get stuff done. Agatha wants to try and get to a guard. So a guard and noble C. Yeah, three, four. Yeah, three, four. There we go. So I am first player. Martin's going first with the money. He's going to go one, two. Loses a point. We're entering the tavern. Still with Agatha there. But he's going to, for one action point, sell this liquor or you know give the liquor away. Buy around on everyone uh, to gain a point and then fill up with gold. And then his third action is going to be to move one, two, three spaces, passing over Elena. He's actually going to give her the gold. So this is going to hold up his liquor running a little bit. He's going to have to go back next turn and get some stuff. But he can pass her all the gold and she could go in there and try and make a friend. She does want to make it to the dealers. So you could try that. That's Martin done. Let's get rid of this gem as well. You can just discard it if you don't want it. It's a waste though, isn't it? Baldwin is next and is going to smuggle. So can turn in a badge, a gem and a wine to complete this mission for nine points. I'm 20. Second action, he's going to go one, two, three. Third action, he is going to go one, two. And whilst he's going to use his stamina to pick up three money and the gem that David's been dawdling over. Been there forever. Elena's next and is now going to slip into the tavern. Doesn't have anything else to do there really, but has four money and could maybe make a good friend. So we've got Grim the Hangman, Tristan the Tunnel Worker, Ruth the Pawnbroker and Wilma the Winemaker. So Wilma gives you a wine immediately and then wine in your hideout at the end of the game is worth two points each. Ruth lets you convert things in your hideout so gem or liquor can be converted into two money and a point each and wine two money and two points each only for the friendly thief tristan gives you an extra movement point if you move through the catacombs and grim the hangman makes every badge in your hideout worth two points at the end of the game i think more movement when she goes through the catacombs would be nice that's going to cost it only cost her one as well martin's regretting giving her so much money <laughs> and uh, we got a point for that so she moved she had the action in the tavern she has still got money though to buy liquor she hasn't got space because she's got the painting should have given martin the painting that's a good idea actually he could have dealt with that. Okay, she's going to do action number three. One, two, three. And yeah, let's spend the stamina now. Get her off the streets. One, two. Into the dealer to do that next time. Oh, she's got money to buy items at the dealer. So it wasn't all bad. Marty is going to be controlling Agatha now. So Agatha's in the market. Agatha is going to come out of here. One, two, three. One, two, three. And she's going to steal from guard A here. Get in his badge because of her cudgel that gets her a point. And moves the guard on. So she doesn't want to go in this way, she'll go that way. The patrols are next for me. So Noble A is down here. I'm coming, let's have him go towards the, the hideout a little bit. And Noble B, yeah, I don't want to move towards Marty. Then it's Guard A. Unfortunately, like if I could have had them, if Noble B had still been there, could have arrested Marty. She's going to have to have them go there though. And then Guard B, don't want going towards my hideout, do we? I am in the dealers. Yeah, it's going to just be problems for the liquor run. Go that way. Marty's patrols are also number three. So Noble C, he's going to move towards his hideout. Guard C, it's moving over there. Yeah, because Agatha can take their badge straight away. It's kind of wedged between two guards there, though. She'll just have to move the guards early next turn to get rid of A so she can come this way, maybe. Oh, no, it'll only be there. It'll be okay. The catacombs are down here. And then the carriage... Is going to go one lantern, two lanterns, back to her. Back to Marty's hideout. Number four is David, who doesn't really want to go in the dungeons anymore. David can grappling hook, though. He's going to move there. He's going to use his grappling hook to go straight across an alley to the market. And he's going to fill up on money to see if he can help Martin out a bit. This get-rich-quick scheme with liquor's has taken ages, isn't it? Marty's fourth is Isabella, who still has a painting, but it's kind of clear now. One two there is already someone in here so loses a point but can sell the painting for a badge and eight points so worth it i think the dealer's got that Deal dealer will also buy gems and you can also buy some equipment she's got no money though so unfortunately oh could have come out of the yeah could have taken two money out of the hideout but everything out here costs at least three so no unfortunately not this time still got an action left i think just one two 
three. Get ready to steal from them, perhaps. Okay, that's another round. So we move down to round four. Planning markers and stamina come back. Patrol board swap. And a point for everyone in an alley. So Marty has two in alleys and I have one. Trailing here. Missing a smuggling mission, aren't I really? I've got friends, but <laughs> haven't paid off just yet. And we've still got that painting. That's going to catch us up a bit when that finally gets sold. Lena just needed another action, didn't she? Yeah, it's not, it's not all bad. Right. Okay, Marty's first and he is going for patrols. So Noble A. Yeah, all the nobles have still got stuff. Going to go towards him a bit. Noble B. This way. And then patrol A. Definitely doesn't want to choose to go this way and arrest him. So go forward. And B will choose... Yeah, get arrested that way, so we'll go this way. That's the patrols sorted. David is going first on my team. So David can go one, two, three for one action. One, two, three for another action. He just basically wants to give Martin all of his money. Oh, he might as well take the gem as well. And the third action, does someone want a gem and a badge? No. He needs to get a liquor next time. Yeah, one, two, three. And on his way back, he could swap with him and he could make his way there next time. And that in. Ooh, yeah. Okay, three actions just moving about, but doing some nice trading. For Marty, Agatha is going next. And Agatha is going to steal from God C. Another badge, another point, and it activates them. So don't want them coming this way. I have to go this way and move over there. But that leaves the coast clear now. She's just going to go one, two, three. They're both facing that way. One. That's blocked off two so the carriage could move she wants to steal from the carriage she's gonna end up in the hideout safe and sound maybe steal from god b next time the only one with the badge left she could turn them all in here for six points then yeah that's agatha martin ma 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 martin is going to fully loaded up with money step into the tavern for an action good if you had that grappling hook wouldn't it he could try and make a friend oh he's already got a friend no don't bother doing that. He's just going to load up four liquor. And then his last action, one, two, three. And why not on his... Let's give him the stamina. One, two. Back in there, safe. Oh, the patrols have already gone, haven't they? Yeah, they've already moved. We'll control them next time. We're safe. Just worried. That's very close. And then passing over David could have given him one of the liquors. David's going to have to get money again. He needs two money to hand that in. We're getting there, though. Yes. Marty's number three is Baldwin. Could spend an action picking that money up, but it seems a little bit wasteful. He's just going to come out now, free from guards. Go one, two, three. Pick the pocket of this noble and get a gem. And he wants to make his way to the deal as he's got money. He could buy things. He could hand in these gems. One, two, three, four. He's got his shoes on. And why not? He'll have the extra stamina. One, two, three, four. Gets him into the building. I am already there. It's the downside, but it's okay. Elena actually isn't going to be there much longer though. He's going to sell the painting for two money. Oh, that's a shame. We can't hold two more money. So we're going to have to lose one. But eight points catches us up a bit. But Elena's got money. He's going to buy these climbing tools. So these climbing tools cost four. That's all of her money and don't get any points. But what they let you do is once per turn, climb over a wall. Basically ignore the wall. So what I'm thinking is she could... She kind of jumped the walls into locations as well. So going from here to here lets you into the location, even though there isn't an entrance there. Could be really good for moving about. So that's one action. Buying that. Could have bought a sack and then she would have had enough uh, money for stuff. Some more climbing tools come out there. And yeah, she's going to come out and go one, two, three using her climbing tools. One, two. We haven't got the extra stamina, so that's going to have to be her turn. Marty's player number four is Isabella. Who is going to steal from this noble here for an action. Move one, two, three. Oh, if Marty had the stamina, she wants to steal the wine as well. But if she does that, I haven't moved the carriages yet. And I'll absolutely get her arrested because she'll be wanted for that. Okay, don't move there then. Do some Robin. One, two, three. One, two. Pick up some gems next time. And finally, it's the patrols for me. Noble C. Go away from Marty a bit. It's a bit tied up. Though has been robbed. Doesn't really matter. Yeah, get, get him in the way maybe. It makes movement quicker for you. So actually, it might be useful for mine. I'm going over this wall. If we can bring him down here. Guard C skips over this lantern. But we want to go this way rather than find our people. And then the carriage can go and skip over all of this. There's one lantern. There's two lanterns. By me now. 
Okay, end of the round, the day. We move on to number five. Take our planning markers and our stamina back. Swap the patrols. Point for everyone in the streets. So Marty has nobody. I have one person brave in the streets on the lookout. And then it's the end of round four. So we need to flip the bags back. The nobles have goods again. Refill the badges. A and C have badges again. And refresh this display of items. We've got things like the thimble rig that when you rob a noble, you get money and the gem rather than choosing. Or the messenger pigeon that lets you trade three things between your own thieves. Not a painting though, because that's four things. You know, four slots. And everywhere without a smuggling mission gets one. I think it's just here at the moment. Okay then, night five. I am the first player. Okay, we've got patrols moving first. I want them out of the way of David. So noble A. You can come my way, make this route a bit shorter, maybe. Noble B, same thing. Patrol A, you can go all the way around here to this lantern. I don't think that gets in the way. And then Patrol B, there's not much choice, you'll go in there. Done, Baldwin is first for Marty. Baldwin is in here, I think, selling gems for a point apiece. And then picking up some gear. He's got three gold. He's going to buy this cudgel with that three gold, which is worth a point in itself. And then move one, two and steal from the guard. Steal his freshly pinned back on badge, which gives Marty a point and activates the guard. Going that way. And he's not going to give him the stamina marker. Okay, next up is David, who's had his route cleared. He's going to go one, two, three, one, two, three. And then I think he's got... Oh, we're missing the money. We're missing the money. Oh, well, that gets in the way of stuff, doesn't it? Because he can't Grappling hook out of here nicely. He needs two money and not the gem. There's a money waiting in the hideout. I forgot about that. Okay, well, little swapsies. Let's have Martin go first, because he could get the money and drop off two to him and be a bit less efficient in the liquor. So dropping off three liquor for two points each, it's going to be six points to me. And he fills up on gold. Action one. Action two can come out here. One, two, three. Jumping over can give David two of that money. And then let's give him the extra action. Third action go in here. Fourth action, he will buy the liquor and get ready to come back for a few more points. Maybe he can start making full runs. I don't know if he's going to get a chance. He has to keep giving David all of his stuff to get these six points. Was it worth it? Maybe. David could always steal on his way. Okay, it is time for the patrols. C. Well, C could go right up here and be next to Baldwin. Guard C. Ooh, this is bad for me because these lanterns are all blocked off to make my route shorter. Marty can have the guard come all the way over here. He's seen me. I've got no way of avoiding it. Oh, that is awful. Again, didn't see that coming. <laughs> Not have put them there. I wanted the one movement point that that gave me. I don't think it even helped him get into the tavern. Okay, back to the hideout. Lost all of his stuff. And lost two points again. And then the carriage. I should keep swapping it between us. Once he'll have it come. One, two lanterns. And that's it. It is time for David. Oh, poor David. <laughs> Maybe Elena needs to pick this stuff up now. He can grapple in hook into here and fill up on money. And then go one, two. And he can grapple in hook into there next time. Top Martin up. Maybe by a friend. I think he needs to stay out though. One, two, three. To try and get the points for being in the streets. Agatha has got some badges. It's got a lot of gold. Wants to steal that wine, but can't really. Okay, he's going to one, two, three. One, two. Yeah, three, and then go in there. So three actions, but a fourth. She's going to pick up. She's a bit full of stuff. She basically wants the liquor to go and do that next time. But I don't know if it was... I don't know if that's worth it. She could just pick up the badge and sell all of the badges over there and go and buy something. She's just seen an opportunity and wants to take my stuff so I can't just grab it back. Okay, Elena is next for me. Let's carry on with the plan for what it's worth. Fill up on gems. See if we can make something out of this. We're supposed to go into catacombs to make the most out of this stuff. One, two, three. Don't know if she'll even get to the thing to sell any of it. Isabella is last and is robbing that house up there. We won't get as much from it. We'll just race him back to this dealer with a load of gems now. So that's one action. Although, how's she going to get back? Patrol B's in the way there. She's got no money on her. Catacombs are very far away. Marty will get to move B next time. I can move it down this way. 
one, two, three, one, two. B's already been robbed. Yeah, that's okay. And that's it. So we move down, we get our markers back, swap the patrols around, and who's in the streets? Marty's got two. I have also got two. So desperately trying to keep up. And Marty's going to be first player. Okay, he wants to try and get me caught. He's going to have Agatha go first. Agatha is full up on everything right now. Oh, could have. While she was in here last turn, why didn't she sell all of these badges? I think she was thinking about that. But yeah, why wouldn't you just sell the badges for two points each? One, two, three, four, five, six. During the action she was there last time. Because then she'd have room to just pick up... She couldn't pick up any more gold, but she could have picked up that gem. So this turn, one, two, three, is going to rob guard A, get a point because of the cudgel, and move them there. And next time, she's going to activate stuff. One more action. I think she can really do very much. She hasn't got the wine for this. Doesn't want to be in the guard's path. She'll just go over here. Elena, <laughs> luckily going first and getting out of the way. One, two, three. One, two, three. Sell the gems for a point each. One, two, three, four. That's going to be it. Patrols move next. And yeah, Patrol A was about to sweep in there. So Person A could end up... Oh, all the way <laughs> over here. Doesn't want B making it easier for the patrol to get to Agatha. And then Patrol A is going to turn and go this way. Patrol B, he wants to definitely not turn that way. Turn this way. And yeah, just just go step the gods, look at each other for a bit. Okay, that's the patrols. How's he got four gold? Have I done something wrong here? David just got arrested. He must have swapped stuff with him. So Martin can come out and end up in there for three movements and give David two money to try and make a friend. I could have spent an action first to get two more liquor and fill up. So did that, second action move, third action move, and then fourth action is going to be... Yeah, did these the wrong way around again. Fourth action is going to be to sell that liquor for eight points, which I think is only just going to just catch me up. Closer, he's not out in the streets, so he isn't going to get me a point. Number three for Marty is Old Baldwin. Doesn't have a lot at the moment. Well, he's next to a noble, so I can rob a gem from a noble. Has a cudgel and stuff. Just the guards have ended up far away, haven't they? Go over here and rob A as well. Why not? That's him taken care of. And then three for me is David. So David's just going to go here and try and make a friend for two money, I think. Are there any two money friends? Oh, everyone is two money. Uh, two money for two points. You, your ability doesn't really matter to me anymore. We've got Toa who, in the tavern, you can immediately get a wine and you can teleport between taverns. Samuel the Fool lets you basically swap positions of two of your thieves once a night. Oswald the Smuggler gives you two extra gold and two extra points when you fulfil missions. And Antonius, the priest, gives you a wine for free whenever you go in the church. So it's going to be the hostess. To turn in no points for two gold into two points. Marty has Isabella. He's still got his stamina. Isabella's just got a load of gems. We're just coming back here, I think. One, two, three. One. Doesn't really need his stamina. Could, could he have robbed from the thing first? One, two, three. One, Rob, what is it? No. Just go in there, sell your gems for a point each, and that's it. You can just, oh yeah, you can move back out so that he gets another point. And then patrols, finally, Noble C can move out. Patrol C, yeah, can't move them in such a way that they'd get Marty. And then the carriage can just move two spots. There we go. And so we move to the full moon, the end of the game. So everything you've got left, whether it's on your thieves, whether it's in your hideouts, every four gold is a point. So Marty has got four, six gold. So four gold is one point. I have got one gold, so nothing. Every set of two gems, Marty's got three gems. So every two is worth a point. Every set of two liquor, he's only got one. I've got no other possessions, basically. I didn't get those two points, did I, when I hired someone? <laughs> it means that I'm not winning. Every badge is worth a point each. We can flip him over to the 50 side. And every undelivered painting is worth three points each. You keep your goods on that. If we'd taken any of those guests, you know, that rewarded you for having particular things in your in your hideouts, with the full moon icon basically means the end of the game. Didn't get any of those. Oh, and it's not in the streets he wants to go back. He wants to go back to his hideout. Anyone who made it back to their hideout gets a point also. 
I think that was an option for anyone apart from Isabella. So yeah, Marty, clearly the better organiser of a Thieves' Guild than me, 52 to 43. So there we go. That is Thiefdom. I hope you enjoyed that and it gave you a good idea of what the game is like. Again, the campaign page is linked in the description if you would like to go over and check out the final thing, what it comes with, how you can make it happen. If you'd like to see more from me, there are hundreds of playthroughs on this channel. Maybe you'd like to see the couple I've done for Clans of Caledonia, the previous game from Karma Games. Uh, for now, though, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you for the next game. Bye, everyone.